All right, today let's talk about infrared inspection because I, I, I still get a lot of questions about that. Um, recently just did some training for a bunch of property managers and engineers and I think there's some misunderstanding of infrared, how it should be used, you know, frequency, what's the real power of the infrared inspection. Let's talk about infrared in general. You know, in infrared, you and I will see it as heat. It's a light wave. You know, we always relate it. I always like to relate it back to a movie. Um, and Predator, you know, the creature saw Arnold Schwarzenegger in the jungle. He saw the different colors of the body. That was infrared. That, that's heat. So you and I see it as heat. So an infrared inspection is to, is to help you detect hot spots in your electrical system. What it'll do is it'll tell you if you got a hot breaker, um, a hot connection, something you need to replace, something you need to service. But as well as infrared it is a great tool as part of as part of your preventive maintenance program something you should do on an annual basis the infrared report should be more than just hey tell me the hot spot the infrared is actually a snapshot of where your building is now telling you what you need to fix and correct but also things that you should be dealing with over the next couple years see some of the other components in the infrared inspection should include a good visual you might see something broken, something burnt that has no load on it or no heat to it. Um, and it also should tell you about maintenance. See, part of an electrical um, maintenance plan is you gotta think of what I need to do over the next three to five years. While I'm doing infrared annually, there are other things I need to be doing to maintain the electrical system as part of my safety program for my building. So the report should say, hey, in two years, your ground faults are due. Or hey, your ATS is due for its annual NFPA 110 annual service in four months. Hey, your arc flash, a five-year revisit is due in two years. There are things that'll tell you to do now and things that you should be budgeting for. It allows you to focus and allocate the time and funds where it needs to be now and preparing for where it needs to be a little bit later. Uh, the other thing about the infrared inspection is it really should give you a level of peace of mind. Um, people say, why would it give me peace of mind, you know? You know what, it's really cheap insurance. What if you went through and you found a few problems? Wouldn't it be nice to know that, hey, I only had a few problems that are correct. What if you went through and you found a lot of problems? Wouldn't it be nice to know that, hey, I need to address some of these problems now? Wouldn't it be nice to know if, if I need to budget for some of those and I can budget for them? Think of it like your car when you go to the dealership. You know, you get an oil change, they also do their so many point inspection. That, that'll that let you know brakes, fluids, belts, tune-ups, uh, uh, suspension. You know, we don't like that because when it always comes back, it's like, what do you mean it's more than 30 bucks? You know, you gotta do all this other work. But isn't it nice to know if you know, hey, it came out good? Isn't it nice to know like, hey, I got a problem here that maybe I need to address now, or you know, I need to do this in my next service? You know, infrared inspection should do that also. Should give you peace of mind of where I'm at now, and then if I need to address something that might affect the integrity and reliability of the electrical system. So what should be included in your infrared inspection? What components should be scanned and inspected? And I tell people it's pretty simple. You look at your main service, your main switch gear room where utility comes in, you scan that and everything it feeds. So that's panels, transformers, motor covers, motor controllers, um, whatever's part of the electrical system, you open it. If you can't, if there's equipment not running, I would try to switch and get that loaded on there so we can scan it. If you can't switch the loads, at least do a good visual on it. Find something burnt, something damaged that needs to be done. It should be the whole electrical system scanned during normal business hours. See, that's the key. If there's no load on it, there's no heat. So you don't want to do it when everybody's gone. You want to do it while everybody's there. Nothing's going to be turned off, but you want to catch the hot spots under normal running conditions. And the key is the panels need to be taken off. It's not x-ray. So if we're going to do a good visual and we're going to do a good infrared inspection, the covers need to come off. You inspect, you do your documentation, your notes, you put the covers back on, you move on to the next piece of equipment. When you do your infrared inspection properly, as we talked about, and you get that report, what's nice is it gives you that key component to your five-year maintenance plan. It's interesting because when you look at uh, NFPA 70E and they talk about the principles for an electrical uh, safety program, the second thing they talk about is maintenance. That maintenance is a critical part to maintain electrical safety 
at your facility. So when you do an infrared inspection, you're actually being compliant to the very thing that they tell you that you should be. And also it puts you in the seat to know what I need to fix now and then what I need a budget for in the near future.